there are, as you probably well know, Jeff, 3,500 up to 4,000 maybe franchise concepts in North America. Uh, it's, it's nearly impossible really for someone who's interested in learning about franchises to uh, disseminate all the information and, and do what they need to do and conduct the proper investigation and diligence to figure out if any or which franchise might be right for them. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. I appreciate you taking time to join me on this next fireside chat. I'm joined by Eric Wexler. Eric is an independent consultant with FranChoice. So Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So as an independent consultant, um, you know, your role is critically important to the process in, in franchising or finding a franchise that's right for someone. Can you kind of just give me the 30 second to minute overview of your role, the, the value that you bring to the table as a consultant. So what I do when, when I have somebody that is interested in the opportunity and the potential that being a business owner through franchising can provide them is I help them really understand what it is they're looking for, uh, what it is they bring to the table from all perspectives, operationally, their skill set, their desire for personal fulfillment, their investment criteria, their, their, uh, earning criteria. And I help uh, bring down from that large list, even still just several hundred large lists of curated franchise concepts to a handful that may be a particularly good fit for someone that's interested in, in getting into business as a franchisee. And I bring them through a process to help them understand franchising, to help them determine which franchise concepts might work for them based on their criteria, to coach them and guide them through an investigation. Uh, ultimately, if, if successful, uh, if they can find what they're looking for, then I help them through launching the business. Really? So that, that's interesting. I was The next question I was going to ask is, how long do you stay involved in the process? It's not just once they find it and, okay, they're committed to this franchise concept. Do you bow out at that point or do you continue to work with them? I'm always available. Once I've established the relationship, a relationship that typically builds over at least several weeks, if not several months. Um, so I've stayed involved with, candidates for, for years and years, really over the last couple of decades, even, even, even on a personal level, friendship level, I'm always available to help and coach them. Uh, my true um, uh, uh, value that I bring really ends once they launch the business because they don't need me so much anymore. They're so focused with the franchisor. They've made the decision with a franchisor that they've determined with complete confidence and a high level of competence is the right franchise company for them business model and the the culture, the support, the leadership team, everything about it, the, the, the fellow franchisees. Um, and so they don't need me at that point, but I'm always available for them just given my experience and in, in helping so many hundreds of people launch over the years. Great. So I was just thinking about the, the kind of the handoff period. So let's say from yeah. uh, worrying contract, we're ready to go. Uh, and it's three months until launch, your handoff period, kind of somewhere in between there. Yeah, I'm really handing off at the where the where the real diligence begins. So I spend typically a few weeks with a candidate on a regular basis, helping them determine what they're looking for and then introducing them to brands. Um, and then they really spend the majority of their time from that point forward working with the brands themselves and going through their very deliberate discovery process. I coach them along the way to make sure they're asking the right questions, making the right considerations, that the franchisor is giving them the proper information. I may help them, in fact, almost certainly help most people through funding considerations, um, perhaps legal review of the, of the franchise documents, or at least introducing them to a third party to help them with that. The handoff really happens at the introduction to the franchisor. Some candidates of mine or clients um, don't need me at all anymore after that, and, and, and maybe they refer back to me, they're welcome to. Others appreciate the coaching that I provide, and so I stay involved really through their launch. And then again, it becomes almost more at a personal level once they've launched, if they want me involved just as a, just as someone that can advocate for them. Um, but my real value ends once they're launching with the franchise that, that I've helped them select. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Tell me this. Um, if you were to be able to give us a kind of an ideal avatar, who, who is an ideal franchisee? What, what yeah and the skill sets and background do they yeah. have? 
So that's a, it's a, an excellent question, of course. And, and some of it depends on what business model they end up choosing, right? What skill sets they need specifically. Maybe it's more focused on the marketing and sales end of a business, depending if that's what the model is. Maybe it's more focused on the operational execution or HR management or um, so it depends on that. But as far as franchise ownership, itself, which is what I'm helping people determine if, if that's right for them before I even introduce them to particular brands. Um, it's an interesting balance, Jeff, of it's not quite a pure entrepreneur, right? A pure entrepreneur we've known, you've certainly known, there's someone that's got the idea and they've got the wherewithal to execute the idea on their own. Um, they've got the ability, the patience, all the things that it takes to make mistakes that they didn't, that they didn't foresee and to be able Franchising is a unique model. You need an entrepreneurial spirit to have the desire to, to achieve success as a business owner, but you also have to have an appreciation and respect for what the franchisor has built and the expertise that they bring. So an ideal candidate is someone that has that balance. They've Most often, they've excelled in the corporate world, but they have an itch to be a business owner. And so it's a balance. There, there's an adage in franchising you're probably familiar with. It may even seem cliche to folks that have been in franchising like you and like I have and so many others, but it's that you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So you have to desire and be willing to take the support and the expertise uh, of, of a franchisor, um, but also, of course, have what drives an entrepreneur, which is the desire to be a business owner. I love that. That's a great way of, of kind of summing it up. So if, if somebody is looking to get into uh, franchising and they reach out to you, uh, when it comes to finance and, and everything, how prepared do they need to be? Uh, do they need to have a big nest egg set aside or is that something that you can work with them on? Well, certainly it's a relative consideration. We have concepts in our inventory that the, 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 the initial costs, and I don't just mean a franchise fee, that, that's a relative thing too, but the working capital requirements that a candidate through their diligence working with the franchise or with the franchise companies would determine um, can be as low as low six figures, maybe high five figures, but typically, you know, uh, up to millions of dollars, depending on the, the size and the scope of the business. Is it a service business that doesn't need an office? Um, maybe it doesn't need that much by way of labor. Is it a brick and mortar that needs a whole lot more of an initial investment? So, a lot of people are very surprised that they can they can build ultimately can be a very successful business for a not so significant income, uh, investment. But again, it's a very relative term. Certainly, you have to have a financial wherewithal at some level. Um, whether you have it currently right now and and you can invest your your liquid capital into launching a business, or whether you need to seek third party funding, which most folks that I've worked with again, it's been thousands of people I've worked with in my career, hundreds of people that I've helped to place, um, most of them have a balance of self-funding and then leveraging capital from you know, a variety of other ways. Okay. If you don't mind, I'd love to expand on that. Just to sure. give everybody a little bit of uh, an idea on where that capital comes from, should they need it. So if they, sure. it's typical as far as getting a loan. Right. So there are some most traditional and obvious things like lines of credit, home equity line of credit. Um, their SBA has programs. They can sometimes be cumbersome, but they're available for sure. Um, um, if if uh, a candidate or client of mine is a veteran, there, there are more options available through uh, military benefits, even things like leveraging GI Bill, which most people contribute or, or consider as, a, as an education uh, tool. For funding, but it also can be applied to business. Uh, the four hundred one k rollover, very very popular tool to leverage, is and this would take more of a discussion than probably you and I are going to have in this brief fireside chat. But there is a, a completely endorsed, developed even by the IRS, uh, way to leverage your retirement funds into business ownership, not withdrawing your your retirement funds and paying the, the steep penalties, but leveraging it in the same way that your 401k assets are invested in the market. You can divest those same assets from the market and invest them in your, uh, in, in launching a business. So traditional SBA, 401k rollover. Um, and then there are some non-secured uh, or unsecured rather uh, lending options that depending on the candidate sometimes is necessary. It's not always the, the first go-to. 
Nice. And then would you recommend that somebody have already done some research into their funding options and what they might qualify for before talking to you? Or is that something that you'd like to work with them on? Um, it, it's certainly good if somebody has an understanding of what they have and what's available to them. Uh, most folks don't know about a lot of the programs that are available. And so absolutely one of the services that I provide and, and that we at Franchise provide is helping them consider things that they wouldn't have otherwise had any idea existed. So it's not necessary for somebody to do the research ahead of time. It's something we're going to get to that I'm going to get to with them at, at the top of a consultation. Now, as an independent consultant for Franchise, um, you're located out on the East Coast. Uh, are your services restricted to the market that you're in or can you work with anybody anywhere? Anybody, anywhere. I have, I have candidates uh, all over North America, mostly here in the, in the United States, of course, but, uh, but no, there's no restriction. Okay, very cool. So for anybody who's considering a franchise today, what advice would you give them? Um, you, you don't want to take a swing at it by just going online and searching for a franchise. There, there are too many out there and, and, and leveraging a service like mine, like franchises to help vet through um, the the opportunities that are there is really, really important. It saves a lot of time. It saves, ultimately, it could save a lot of money. So leverage the expertise that sounds self-gratuitous, but that someone like me can bring, that someone that understands franchising can bring, uh, leverage the expertise and the experience. Uh, don't go out there and, and search on your own. I, an analogy that that some people use, Jeff, and this may or may not be of, of, of value to people here, but an analogy sometimes is, is a realtor. You know, it, you can go out and you can search for a home yourself. You can, you can do all that diligence yourself, even, even the, the funding part you could do yourself. But really hiring a professional real estate agent and having them help you through that search is what most people do. And it's very similar in franchising, or at least it should be. That makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Now, especially when factoring in the potential pitfalls, the things that you've seen and done and worked through and the challenges that you've overcome with your clients in the past, being able to apply that to this process not only helps speed things up, but ultimately helps save money. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the cost and the structure? Obviously, the, the franchisee here is you. So you work for them. Your your interest, uh, well, their interest is what you're protecting. Um, what is that structure like uh, as far as the financial relationship? Sure. Compensation on the back end, or is it up front? Yeah. How does that work? Again, it's a bit analogous to a realtor. Um, there is there is no fee for working with me whatsoever. Not at the beginning, not in the middle, not at the end. To to the potential franchisee, to the consumer, if you will, um, we're paid by the franchise company. So a very logical way to look at it is the franchise company, the franchisor, certainly the ones that we work with, they're really focused on supporting franchisees operationally, helping drive the success of the, of the franchisees. They have a bit less of a focus. Certainly, they're still focused on it, but a bit less of a focus on the marketing and recruitment of new franchisees, the companies that we work with. They leverage us. So rather than having to develop an infrastructure on their own of sales and marketing department, Again, being, allowing them to focus on the operational execution and support of the franchisees from all perspectives necessary. They essentially retain us to help them find somebody that might be a good fit for their business model. And when that comes to fruition and a candidate or a client of mine becomes a franchisee, that franchise company then pays my fee. Again, very similar to a realtor. The services of a real estate agent is completely free to the person shopping for the home. It doesn't change any aspect of the of the transaction price. The the realtor gets paid at the transaction. It's the same for me. And if it doesn't come to fruition, then I've invested my time and the candidates invested their time and it hasn't cost anybody any money. Okay. I'm so glad we touched on that because this really takes it to that next level of if you're going down this path and you're considering something, why not get the help? Why not? Absolutely expertise because even if you're trying to save money um it's it's not gonna i mean this is this is the optimal way to save money is to bring you in it is the ftc requires that somebody buying a franchise and, and franchising is ultimately regulated by the federal trade commission of course um the ftc regulates that whether a candidate finds a franchise on their own or whether they use my services the fees to them have to be exactly the same so that buyer, if you will, 
that new franchisee is paying the exact same franchise fee regardless. It's just the franchisor's choice to, to pay me essentially uh, you know, a percentage of that fee for my services, which again, saves them money ultimately and allows them to focus on supporting the franchise owners and, and not so much recruiting them. Love it. Well, Eric, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate the opportunity to sit down with you, to learn about your side of the business and how you bring so much value to the franchise space. My pleasure, Jeff. I appreciate you having me and I hope this brings value to, to viewers and I can be of service to them. I'd be happy to help. And how will they find you if they want to look you up? Um, well, my name is Eric Wexler. It's spelled I-R-I-C, which is unique and probably important for me to mention. They can find me through the Franchise website. They can find me on LinkedIn. They can find me on Facebook. Uh, I'm out there. They, they can research me and see who I am and what I've done. Uh, Eric, I-R-I-C Wexler. Um, and uh, yeah, they, probably the best way is to search me. They could certainly send me an email. My email address is my first initial I, last name Wexler at Franchise.com. Um, with the unique first name like I have, I'm pretty easy to find when people search for me. Find you. Well, I will also make sure to include your contact information in the description. Great. So anybody can find it down there if they're interested in contacting Eric. So, hey, thank you again for your time. This has been great. My pleasure, Jeff. Thank you.